So this morning, we are going to be reading together out of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 through 16. So if you have your Bibles with you, either on your phone or tablet or in print form, if you would open to Ephesians chapter 4, and I will be reading out of verses 7 through 16. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, Speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up as each part does its work. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Last week, Pastor Matt preached on unity. He spoke to the fact that Christ calls us all to be united and that this unity only comes through Christ. We are called to be one, to be of like minds, to be united. So you might think it's funny that the very next verse or our se segment of verses in Ephesians chapter 4 is actually about how different we all are in God. Specifically, that while united as a whole body, God has given each of us gifts and graces that are vastly different from each other. We pull some specific things from this passage that I want to share with you today. The first is that although the church is essentially one, as has been shared in verses 1 through 6, it contains incredible diversity. The unity mentioned last week is not samesies or twinsies, right? It's not being all the same. It's not being all identical to each other. Christ gives grace and gifts to each one of us, which differs from person to person in both character and degree. In this passage, grace is not referring to mercy or forgiveness like we often hear of in scripture, but instead the word grace here is used equivalent to gifts. It means the divine calling and divine qualifying that God gives us to carry out certain tasks within the church. And here we read Paul telling the church in Ephesus that each and every member of the body of believers is given different graces meaning different divine calling and qualifying. That we're each called to something unique to us within the ministry of the body of believers. And we are each qualified uniquely for that. Isn't it beautiful, a beautiful thing, that no one possesses all of the gifts needed in order for the church to function properly? A church of one would not be a very wonderful church, would it? But instead, God uses each of us to build the body of believers. The church just would not be whole without each part of the body. Essentially, none of us could run the church on our own. Paul says it another way in 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 27, and I want to read that to you today to kind of um, augment what we're talking about here in Ephesians. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 27, it says this. There is one body, but it has many parts. But all its many parts make up one body. It is the same with Christ. We are all baptized by one spirit. And so we are formed into one body. It didn't matter whether we were Jews or Greeks, slave or free. We were all given the same spirit to drink. So the body is not made up of just one part. It has many parts. Suppose the foot says, I'm not a hand, so I don't belong to the body. By saying this, it cannot stop being a part of the body. And suppose the ear hears, or the ear says, I'm not an eye, so I don't belong to the body. By saying this, it cannot stop being a part of the body. If the whole part of the body were an eye, how could
could it hear? And if the whole body were an ear, how could it smell? God has placed each part in the body just as he wanted it to be. I'm going to read that verse again. It's verse 18 in case you're highlighting. God has placed each part in the body just as he wanted it to be. If all the parts were the same, how could there be a body? As it is, there are many parts, but there is only one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. The head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, it's just the opposite. The parts of the body that seem weaker are the ones that we can't do without. The parts we think are less important, we treat with special honor. The private parts aren't shown, but they are treated with special care. The parts that can be shown don't need special care. But God has put all the parts of the body together. And he has given more honor to the parts that don't have any. And that way, the parts of the body will not take sides. All of them will take care of one another. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part shares in its joy. You are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to go back to that piece in verse 18 where it says, God has placed each part in the body just as he wanted it to be. That really goes to what we're talking about in Ephesians chapter 4. We are unified. We are together. We are united as one, and yet we are not all the same. God has appointed gifts. He's apportioned gifts to each of us, graces to each of us, of different size and different measure. And he's done it just as he sees fit, to build his kingdom. So we see in, Eph in the book of Ephesians, as is echoed in 1 Corinthians, that God has given us gifts and graces that are unique to us. We each have a unique piece to play in the body of Christ. I think of it often... Um, I hear my daughter say she likes to match other people, and then she says, twinsies, she does this thing with her hand, she goes, twinsies, where they're identical to each other, right? And there's something when you're little that's alluring about the fact that you could be an identical twin to someone, right? I think probably a lot of kids, when they're little, would love to be an identical twin to someone else. But that's not what Christ was talking about when he was talking about unity in the body of Christ. He wasn't talking about identical across the board. He was talking about as one, working together as one body, all of the different parts. I think about VBS this week. I think about what was shared earlier about VBS. None of what happened this last week at our church's day camp would have happened if only Pastor Deborah would have been the only person. None of what happened would have happened if Pastor Deborah would have just had 10 Pastor Deborahs there, right? Or if we would have just had only 10 Rondas. Or ten pastor mats. We needed each and every unique and individual leader that was there to make up the body of Christ so that this last week could be successful. That's just an example, a visual example, of what Paul is talking about here. We see in this scripture that Paul references Christ descending to the lower re earthly regions and then ascending into heaven. We know that after Christ's death on the cross, he descended and then he ascended into heaven. And when he ascended, his omnipresence filled all of heaven and earth, or the whole universe. His reign extended over all of his enemies. And by filling the heaven and earth, he enables the church to grow in his likeness. By ascending to heaven, he then sent us the gift of the Holy Spirit, which enables us to exercise those gifts and graces that God has given us. So why did God give us each various gifts? Well, Pastor Danielle shared a little bit earlier. What would we be if we were not different, if, if we were all the same, right? Without the hands and feet and the head, the various parts of the body. He gave us the gift of various gifts in order to build up the body of Christ. It says that right there in Ephesians chapter 4. That together, when our gifts and our graces are exercised, it's like iron sharpening iron. We, we begin to mature as we work together. We begin to mature in our faith and grow deeper and deeper in our relationship with him. And amazingly enough, as we diversify in our gifts and our graces as a body of believers, at the same time, we're becoming more and more like him in his likeness. So it's an amazing kind of paradigm or, or paradox there that you have that as each of us exercises our gifts, which are vastly different from each other and vastly diverse from each other, at that same
same exact time as we're exercising those, we actually make up one image, which is the image of Christ. Isn't that amazing? That we're not a million little teeny copies of the same person, but that we're all parts of the body. God has given us these various gifts to build up the body of Christ. Uh, one commentator, Talbert, wrote this. The church was to be a community of gifted individuals, each manifesting his or her ministry. The church as a whole is thereby dependent on each member's gifted ministry for its growth. The church as a whole and us individually cannot grow without the rest of the members of the body of believers. I love this because it does not give a picture of the church as a, a hierarchy or just an administration, but instead of a well-oiled machine working together, or maybe even an orchestra or a symphony playing one magnificent score. It's a lot different to listen to one violin playing than to listen to a whole orchestra, right? I'd listen, my, my nephew Ford used to play the violin. He did a great job playing the violin. But it's a lot different listening to just him playing violin than when we go to his music concerts and listen to the whole band playing together. Each instrument making up this beautiful symphony of this magnific magnificent score. Christ has gifted us our various graces in order to equip his people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Each of us reflects who Christ is in various ways through the gifts he has given us. By reflecting this piece of who Christ is, we then show that to others around us, and they begin to experience a larger picture of Christ in their own life. Part of this is not that just that the current body of Christ is built up. Remember in verse 10 when Paul said that Christ ascended to fill the whole universe? Well, God has given us various gifts and graces in order that the entire universe might come to know Christ more. He, that we might be equipped for works of service to the world around us. That the world around us might know him more and more. This is not head knowledge. This isn't just knowing, like reading a book and then I know about what I read in the book, right? This is heart knowledge. This is relationship. Our gifts reflect who Christ is, and therefore we reflect Christ to the world around us. Ultimately, it is not the gifted members of the church who build up the body of Christ. Instead, it is Christ himself who does this. Only as each part of the body does its specific work. It's important to note here that the church Paul is describing is not one of professionals ministering to consumers. I'm going to say that again. The church that Paul is describing isn't just pastors ministering to parishioners. It's not just professionals ministering to consumers. It's not a consumeristic church. But instead, it's a whole church providing mutual service to the community of Christ and the world around them. It's a whole church providing mutual edification. Every one of us is qualified by God to provide works of service to the world around us. It is not of our own. It is of Christ. And it is through this the world around us sees Christ in the body of Christ. One commentary says it this way. To the extent that the church embodies the unity it already possesses, the church fulfills its calling to be the paradigm of future cosmic unity. The reason God gives us various gifts and graces is because in the unity of the body, it's in the unity of the body, the diversity of our gifts, that we as the church universal fulfill God's calling to bring the kingdom of God here to earth. So as we're unified, in Christ, but diverse in the graces and gifts he's given us. We, as the church universal, fulfill God's calling for us to bring his kingdom here to earth. The church unified and yet diverse is the beautiful picture of what the whole and reconciled future kingdom of Christ looks like. As we live out this kingdom of God, we often say it is already and not yet. Meaning that God has already begun to bring it here to earth. And it is not yet fully fulfilled or fully embodied. However, each one of us, not just individually, but in wholeness and unity through whom Christ, through which Christ brings about the already part of his kingdom. It is through each one of us, not just individually, I'm going to say that again, but in wholeness and unity, 
through which Christ brings about the already part of his kingdom. When each of us lives into our gifts and graces, not only is the church edified eternally, but the church universal or the kingdom of God is built up here on earth. We each play a part of the beautiful symphony that is playing out God's future and whole kingdom in the here and now. So I ask you, in what ways has God given you gifts and graces? Have you stopped to think about that? Have you stopped to ask God, where are areas that you've graced, graced me, qualified me, right? We talked earlier about God's gifts and graces being divine calling and divine qualification. So where has God called you? What, where's his divine call, his divine qualifications in your life? It looks different for each of us. We had three girls up here earlier leading worship today. Each of them is unique in how God has qualified them and how God has called them. They're all playing a part in his kingdom. For some, God might qualify, call you and qualify you to be an outgoing person who goes and gathers and creates community. For others, you might be a behind-the-scenes person who is steadfast and loyal, showing up and doing the work of God. God has given each of you exactly what you need exactly what you need to live out the call he has placed on your life. Are you using your gifts and graces to mature not only your own faith, but the faith of others in the body of believers? Are you, as scripture says, iron sharpening iron? Are you living out your gifts and graces to build up the body of Christ? Have you asked God to show you how he has graced you to be a part of the bringing of his kingdom here to earth. This week, as we go from this place, I want to encourage you to think those things through. In your time with God, to ask him to open your eyes to see the ways that he has called you and the ways that he has qualified you. And then, once he's shown you those things, ask him to show you places in which you can live out that call in the church, in the community, and the world around us. Pastor Deborah, would you close us in prayer? Father, we thank you for the message.